Beware of divorced preachers. Let's see what the Bible has to say on this subject. You can turn to the book of 1 Timothy, chapter 3. We're going to look at the qualifications that a man needs to meet in order to be preaching God's Word in a faithful way. Um, and I've seen and known a lot of preachers over the years, um, some good ones, mostly bad ones. Um, and I've known them in person. I've been in their homes. I've been in their private studies and, and whatever else, spoken to them. And I've known a lot of them. And I've gone out door-to-door -door witnessing with them and things. So I don't speak from ignorance here. And I've seen that there's a problem with the ones that have been through divorce. Um, and I'm going to give the reasons for that. It isn't just my opinions. Um, there's, there's something very... Um, very real to the thing of a man when he's serving the Lord um, he has to take care of his own home and if a man doesn't know how to take care of his own home specifically a wife um, he really shouldn't be preaching I'm going to have some real strong opinions today and I'm sure I'm going to make some real friends with this one but I really could care less um, there's a lot of people out there a lot of men out there that are currently saying that they're in ministry of some kind and whatever else and um, they really shouldn't be and I'm going to be probably naming some names today and things and and uh, that's just the way it's going to be um, there's some real damage being done to the body of Christ and to the Bible believing movement some real wolves in sheep's clothing that uh, they don't know how to run their own home they don't know how to be a good husband so let's and therefore they don't qualify to be a preacher. So let's read here. 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1. This is a true saying. If a man desire the office of a bishop, he desireth a good work. A bishop then must be blameless, the husband of one wife. Notice how the two are tied in there. Blameless, the husband of one wife. Now I know Peter Ruckman, one of the guys that I will name. Um, I love a lot of what Dr. Ruckman brought out over the years. I met him in person, talked to him. Um, uh, I respect the man, respected the man very highly. Um, I believe he was a saved man, but, uh, he was married. He was married, uh, three times officially. And I knew from different sources, different guys that knew him personally and talked to him a lot on the phone that, um, even his third marriage, there was problems there and whatever else. Um, and again, it's been my experience over the years. Once you have a guy that gets divorced and then remarried, and again, if he gets divorced and remarried, you have a guy that's not a real good husband, not a real good man in the home there. Um, there's problems. And there's some real important reasons, which we're going to be looking at in the scriptures today, why that type of man really shouldn't be in ministry, quite frankly. Uh, what about all the great things that Peter Ruckman knew and whatever else? Well, a lot of it was just because he read so much. I mean, he even talked about that. I could show the studies where he's saying, you know, 60% of my material, I think he said the one time, is Sam Jones. Sam Jones, the uh, Methodist evangelist that was a Freemason. You know, Knight Templar. That's not very good. Um, but Peter Ruckman learned a lot of things from books, from other men. A lot of what he did was not really his original material. Things that the Lord had showed him and whatever else. Took some good, good stands. Praise Lord for the stands that he took. And again, a lot of people are very graceless with the whole thing of Peter Ruckman. And, and it, it gets into these head games, you know. Well, um, you come out against Peter Ruckman. Well, then you have to go and you, you tear down anybody that's learned from him. And you, you, there's all these different things. You know, I've had people try to corner me over the years. Um, you believe the church buildings are wrong? I say, yes, I do. Okay, then are you saying that all church buildings, and that would mean, therefore, anybody who's ever gone to a church building at any point in time, and what, you know, and they'll get you into all these little philosophical little mind games trying to corner you. I've played head games with people for years, okay, and not me trying to play the head games, initiating them. I'm saying people try to play head games with me for a long time. So when I see it, I just, yeah, no. Avoid foolish questions and genealogies and strivings about the law. They're unprofitable and vain. You know, foolish questions. That's a lot of this little stuff that these people come out with. But getting back to our text here, 
Um, a bishop then must be blameless, the husband of one wife, vigilant, sober, of good behavior, given to hospitality, apt to teach, not given to wine, no striker, not greedy of filthy lucre, but patient, not a brawler, not covetous, one that ruleth well his own house, having his children in subjection with all gravity. For if a man know not how to rule his own house, how shall he take care of the church of God? And it starts with the wife. Okay? If a man doesn't have proper control in his home, and specifically so of his wife, then he really shouldn't be in ministry. Okay? And that doesn't, you know, this... There's a lot of perverts out there, and they say, well, the wife has to be there, the, the marriage bed, it's all about the marriage bed, and she just has to do whatever the husband says for her to do whenever he wants it and whatever else. Oh, that's just a small part of marriage. Okay, that's a very little part of marriage. That's not nearly as important as a lot of other things that a husband and wife will go through. Okay, you get a really good marriage, and uh, the marriage bed is just a real tiny little bit of that. Real good marriages are, are marriages where the people go through a lot together. The husband and the wife, they've been through some things. And they've struggled and they've had financial hardships and they get through it. Had to uh, lose children or whatever else and they get through it together. Thick and thin, for better or worse, you know, and they get through it. And they stay together. You know, there's an old saying, uh, a real man is not one that can love a thousand women a real man is one that can love one woman for a lifetime. And there's a lot of truth to that. But a lot of these guys, oh, it's just, you know, one woman after another and, and whatever else and things. And then, you know, and I've seen a lot of the preachers that I've known over the years. And oh, up in the pulpit, oh, they're a holy, oh, man, they're a holy preacher. And you get with them out when they're out in public. They'll flirt with women. I've seen preachers do that get real flirty and, and they'll come in and they'll strike up with conversations with women and, they, and then and they mess around and I, I've seen some of these guys and I think, what are you doing? I don't mess around. I have a wife that I love very much. Why on earth would I want to hurt her? Why on earth would I want to, oh, there's some woman and she's being nice to me and I'll kind of, you know, just see how close I can get there without committing adultery and, and everything. No, no, no. And if you're doing that, these preachers that do that, that type of thing, they're not qualified for ministry. Verse 6, Not a novice, lest being lifted up with pride, he fall into the condemnation of the devil. Moreover, he must have a good report of them which are without, lest he fall into reproach and the snare of the devil. Those are not suggestions, brethren. Those are qualifications. Well, I don't think you have to meet him exactly just, you know, to the to the T. Then you'll make a mess of things. Ephesians chapter 5. Go to Ephesians chapter 5. You know, hey, I, I think, Brother Brian, that, that we shouldn't have such strict standards on marriage. You know, I think that it should be just, you know, if a guy gets, you know, through multiple divorces, he still can be called to preach and whatever. And so we're taking the standards down, are we? That's going to help out the cause of Jesus Christ by taking standards down? There's grounds for divorce, scriptural grounds for divorce, but I think it'd be a much better thing to just simply say, hey, you get divorced, sorry, you're done in ministry. Away you go. I'm going to be giving some marriage advice here. Okay? Uh, not just from my own marriage. This, this will be our 10th year of marriage. Okay, and we've gone through a lot, my wife and I. But I'm going to be giving some marriage advice from marriages that I've seen. Marriages that were 60, 70 years of marriage. My grandparents, one of the examples of that. Over 70 years of being married. Ephesians chapter 5, beginning in verse 21. Yeah, verse 21. Submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. There's supposed to be submission there. One to another in the fear of God. I fear God. That's why I'm not going to cheat on my wife. She fears God. That's why she doesn't cheat on me. I fear God. That's why I want to have control in my home. She fears God. That's why she's submissive to me. 
Verse 22, Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. Oh, well, that's such a demeaning thing for a woman. Oh, you have to submit yourself to your husband. Uh, but if you look at the whole, it's not. But if you look at the whole verse there, as unto the Lord. That wife should look at her husband and she should say, I want to make him as much like the Lord, as much like Jesus Christ as I can. And try to encourage him to study the word more. And Honey, you should get away from those video games. You get away from that television. Get away from this covetousness. Get away from bad eating and this and that. She should be trying to lift him up to the level of being like the Lord. But you know what? As a husband, I can look at that verse right there, verse 22, and I can say, I need to be like the Lord to her. Hmm. Oh, it's okay. Things didn't work out, so I just divorced her. I'll go out and get another woman, a younger one or something. It's wicked what these guys do. Look at verse 23. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the savior of the body. You know, the weird thing about my years of marriage to my wife and all the things I've gone through and, and whatever else, I've noticed that the times we get into the most arguments is the time that I'm messing around with sin. There's times that, that she has done things that, that were not right and whatever else. But you know what? It started because I was messing around with sin. Watched too many stupid videos on YouTube or whatever, just wasted time. And all of a sudden we're having arguments and things are going wrong. Why? Because I made the mistake of letting my spiritual guard down. You see, why did sin and, and death come into the world? Because uh, Adam wasn't with Eve. He had something better to do. So Eve's out there by herself. I mean, oh, and I've had people get mad at me. Well, you can't prove. That. Can you not just have common sense logic? Was Adam right beside Eve and just being quiet? And, and... No, he wasn't. The devil waited till she was by herself. She didn't call for Adam and say, oh, excuse me, hold on. I, you know, my husband really needs to know what you're saying here to me and you're offering, you know, that I eat the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. She didn't do anything of the kind. Why? Adam was off doing something else. The Bible doesn't say what he was doing. But he let his guard down and because of it, his wife fell, brought sin and death into the world. And Adam, being a real man, decided I'm going to die with her. The Bible says that Adam was not deceived. The woman was in the transgre transgression there. It was her fault, but Adam is the one that gets blamed for it. Um, hey, there's, there's my, my wife, you know, she got messed up by feminism and she got messed up by careerism and whatever else. Why didn't you stop it out there, husband? I mean, think about this. Think about the whole thing of Adam and Eve. Eve was the one that sinned. Eve was the one that was messed up, and yet God blamed Adam. By man came death, not by the woman. It's recorded that it was her. She was the one that was deceived by the devil, but man gets blamed for it. So you know what? A little hard truth for you here. You divorced and remarried people that have been through it and through it and through it. You know, man out there, if you're saved and you went through a divorce as a saved man, Guess who God's going to blame for it? You. You. The case of Peter Ruckman. I'll speak about this because I had his tape on the whole thing of his divorce and remarriage. That guy was terrible to his first wife. Jeannie, I think her name was. Absolutely terrible. Went to Bob Jones University for 14 years. They had, I think, five children at the time. And they're just there in, the, in this little trailer. Didn't even have a, its own bathroom. If I remember correctly, he said about that. They had a shared bathroom. For 14 years. And what's he doing? Ruckman's out going and doing evangelistic meetings at churches and things. And the wife and the children are back in this little dumpy trailer. That's terrible. You don't do that to a wife and children. You don't do that. Robert Sheffy. It's amazing that he didn't go through a divorce. His wife, first wife died. I have to wonder why. But the guy was terrible. It was terrible. He was just traveling all the time. Out going here and going there and whatever. Wife and children her wife and son uh, having all kinds of financial trouble and her family had to help them out and everything else. And 
Oh, he's just so driven. Oh, he, but brother, he was serving the Lord. No, he was going out to church buildings and gossiping. Oh, Mrs. Beamer, I love your your apple pies. You make the best apple pie in the area in here. Blah, 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 blah. That's what church buildings are. They're so, social clubs. So you go and you go to this social club and to that social club and to this one and you just travel and your children never see and your wife never sees you. That's not success, okay? <laughs> well, you don't know, brother. I had a wife and she was just awful. Um, I've seen in nearly every case, in fact, I cannot name one case, not one, where it was all the woman. I don't know of one. I mean, it takes two people to divorce. Remember that. Verse 24. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. How much self-sacrifice do you have there, preacher? How much do you sacrifice for your wife? Or is she just your little uh, toy that you take to bed and have fun with and whatever else? And then when she doesn't do that all the time, you say, Oh, she's not providing for me. I'm divorcing her and getting another woman. Well, wicked. Disgusting. Um, have you ever sat up at night because your wife needed to talk? And you gave up sleep because she had to talk? Have you ever been right in the middle of having to do some kind of a job or something like that and there needs to be a talk there? There's a problem? You act like a total jerk to your wife and you, all right, whatever, and you go out and you slam the door. I have to get work done or whatever. And you go out there and you just think, you know, my attitude was really rotten. I shouldn't have treated her that way. Is this how Jesus Christ would treat his church? Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. All right. I'm going to head back in there. You walk back in and you say, Honey, I'm sorry. I was at fault. How about the times when uh, you're messing around? Wasting time and doing whatever else, other kind of things, you're covetous or whatever sins that Christian men do. There's plenty of them. We can go through the whole list, but you kick your own self. Um, did you ever apologize to your wife for opening up the spiritual door for her to be attacked by the devil because of your sin? It will happen. I've seen it many times in my own marriage. Times that my sin has caused her to stumble. You see, if you can't get your marriage figured out, if you can't have a good marriage, then you really have no business teaching the body of Christ out there. You really don't. I mean, if you can't be a successful husband, what in the world are you doing trying to teach other people? Do you even understand the thing of Jesus Christ and how he gave himself for the church? That self-sacrifice? The fellowship? Yeah, I want to be around my wife this weekend. Oh, what about your buddies? I don't care about my buddies. Oh, you're whipped. Oh, you're this, you're that. No, actually, I love my wife. I give myself for my wife. There's not enough days in this, in this you know, life for me to really properly show how much I really love her and how much I really want to take care of her. And, and hey, you know what? We've been working really hard six days a week and whatever else. And I haven't taken her on a date in a while. I think I need to do that. And you talk about one of my biggest problems, one of my biggest sins. That's it. I work too much. We work too much. Oh, when are we going hiking? Oh, I, yeah, I know, but we got I have to get this video done. We have to get this research done. And, you know, and... Does Jesus have time for his bride? For the church? Oh no, the Lord's, uh, he's sitting there watching a football game or something like that, or he's, he's got too much to do for his bride. I don't think so. No. He has time. He makes time. 
Verse 26, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. How often do you wash your wife, their husband, with the word of God? She comes to you and she says, I, you know, I, something's really been bothering me. What does the Bible teach about such and such? Well, honey, uh, look at the time. I have to get down to the local hardware store. The guys are going to be hanging out down there, and I need to go down, and I need to talk and gossip there and whatever else. No, no. Um, you want to be washed in the Word? Honey, okay, let's, let's go through the Bible together. Well, look at the time. Boy, it's, it's supper time, but I'm not quite done yet. Here, let me continue to show you what the Word of God says. Is that what you do? Knew an older uh, couple. They'd been married for many years. I think it was 50-some years that they'd been married. And um, somebody said to them there, and I was sitting there in the same place with them, and they said, um, what's the secret to a long, happy marriage like yours? And the, and the husband said, "One, just one word, communication. You have to talk. You have to be there for each other. Pretty good. Verse 27, that he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. So ought men to love their wives as their own bodies. He that loveth his wife loveth himself. How about that? For no man ever yet hated his own flesh, but nourisheth and cherisheth it, even as the Lord the church. For we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother, and shall be joined unto his wife, and they too shall be one flesh. This is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. Nevertheless, let every one of you in particular so love his wife even as himself, and the wife see that she reverence her husband. You know, it's really an amazing thing when you think about this, how that a man can claim that he's been divorced and remarried, divorced and remarried, divorced and remarried, and yet he's going to have some kind of an understanding of how Christ loved the church. Um, did Christ ever divorce and remarry? Oh, here's the bride, the, the, the body of Christ. Um, oh, yeah, but uh, we're not getting along right now, so the Lord says, I'm, I have to put you away here. I'm going to get divorced. Uh, there's another, so saw this young girl walking by and she's really hot. So I'm going to go see if I can get a date with her. And, and I, she dirt works the one store and I'm going to go try to flirt with her. And it, Jesus wouldn't do that. Can you imagine Lord Jesus Christ and here he is, he gives himself for the church and he loves the church. And, and then you see him over messing around with the Catholic church and with the Islamic church and with the whatever else. Flirting with them? No, no. And a real husband will not flirt with other women. I mean, the Bible says it's, it's good for a man not to touch a woman. What are you doing flirting with one if you're married? Oh, you know, there's some women and I give I like to give them kind of a hard time and whatever else. I just kind of, you know, mm -hmm, yeah, I've seen that. I've seen it. I've known guys that are just fornicators, just wicked, and that's what, the way that they act. And I see preachers doing the same thing. How very vile. 1 Corinthians chapter 14. First Corinthians chapter 14. Verse 34 and 35. Let your women keep silence in the churches, for it is not permitted unto them to speak, but they are commanded to be under obedience, as also saith the law. And if they will learn anything, let them ask their husbands at home, for it is a shame for women to speak in the church. Um, a man that has his wife and children under control, that man has a right to be in ministry. That man can live by example and say, hey, you know what, let me tell you about how to overcome this sin or how to do this or whatever else. Um, that man needs to have control over his wife. It is not permitted unto them to speak. Well, who can who enforces that? That would be the husband. And if she, you're sitting there and a bunch of saints around and whatever else, 
and it's a sort of a formal meeting where you're saying, okay, hey, we need to really talk about what's going on right now and how we can do this and do that. And what, how are we going to evangelize this group that's coming in or whatever? Women keep silent. And she gets a question and she, you know, she looks over at you or whatever else and you, and you just say, write it down. Get out your notebook and paper there and whatever and pencil and write down your question. Ask me when we get home. Right now I'm here as a man acting as a man of God and I need to stand up and say, well, here's my thought on this, brethren, because it lines up with the scripture right here. She's acting sort of like a secretary there, taking notes. You know, the last time I was in a Babel building uh, in Pennsylvania, my wife and I were getting bawled out by the guy there, the pastor there, and she didn't talk. Unless she was asking, I would look at her and I'd say, yeah, go ahead and whatever else. But she was sitting over there taking notes, which was making, making him very nervous, by the way, which was kind of funny. But um, I did the talking for her. That's the way it's supposed to be. So um, a lot of things I could be saying in this study, but I really just wanted to, to get this thing out there. And um, a guy that I actually interviewed years ago... Um, I was listening to a recent broadcast. I like to listen to people, you know, I, people I don't even agree with and whatever else. I like to listen. I like to, I'm not just this closed-minded guy that only, you know, I just listen to myself all the time or something. I like to hear other people, um, even people that I would consider to be heretics. But there's a guy in particular, Eric John Phelps, and I listened to him, one of his most recent broadcasts. It was some rant thing that he was doing and whatever else. And the man blasphemed the Lord in a way that I'm just, I'm, I'm not putting up with it. I just have to say, okay, I'm calling the guy out publicly. It was blasphemy. Um, he's on his third marriage or something, I think. Uh, and he said that the one time God put it on him and, and whatever else, and he said, Phelps, he said, are you going to serve me or are you going to go after? And he uses the word, the V word for female genitalia. And he said that it was God that said that to him. Um, that's vulgar. That's disgusting. You don't use a very graphic word like that. I mean, I can't play. I've, and I've heard him say it a couple times too. He just come out with the, the V word there and, and whatever else. That's graphic. Preachers should never preach in a way that it would offend a child in the room. Oh, you know, there's a preacher on right now, son. Please leave the room here because I don't want you to hear what the preacher has to say. That's vulgar. That's filthy. You know, the Bible says that Abraham knew his wife. It doesn't say he went in and had, you know, the S word. Whether A Christian man should speak differently than the lost. If you remember Peter, and he's there, and they say, Thy speech bereath thee. You're one of these disciples of Jesus, aren't you? I think I've seen you with him. And, it, and he says, no, I'm not. And he denies it. And they say, thy speech be thee. Your speech is different. That's the way it's supposed to be when you're saved. You don't have a foul mouth and say things that are just vulgar and vexing. And you know what? When you say such graphic terms about genital areas and whatever else, I'm sorry I even had to say that. When you say that, it puts images into people's minds. It's wickedness. And then to say, God said this to me. That's blasphemy. That's going away from just, okay, you shouldn't have, that was a little bit. God said to me, are you going to serve me or are you going to be about that? Vile. Vile. But again, a man that's been married multiple times. You know, in a, a rational wiki, it's funny because they actually say I'm the, the love child of Peter Ruckman and Eric Phelps. And I don't resemble either one of them. I'm different than both of them. Both men cling to their, build, their Bible buildings and things and whatever else. Both are highly educated, but you know what? There's problems with both of them. Neither man is able to control his home. Oh, my wife is no good. She went out and she did this. And what did you do to cause it? What did you do? Oh, well, brother, you've, you've had just such an easy marriage and whatever else. <laughs> oh, please. Oh, please. 
if people knew some of the arguments I've had with my wife over the years, oh man, you know, give me a break. Um, there was a lot of stuff about my wife that I did not understand early on, and it led to some very serious arguments. Um, and you know what? I just had to get to a place where I realized, you know what? She needs help. And the funny thing is, by me helping her, it actually helped me become a better man. There's a video game, you know, playing guy lived at, at home in my 30s. Not much of a man. Oh, but you were logging and you were doing all this other tough stuff, going fast on motorcycles. Yeah, but I was a loser. I was a loser other than that. There were times early on she called me a loser, and she was right. She was absolutely right, and I had to face that. I could have said, well, you're, you're a feminist. Oh, you this and you that. I'm leaving you. No, no. I'm going to take this marriage, and I'm going to make it into something. I dedicated myself before the Lord to be married to this woman. I'm going to be her spiritual covering. That's probably another reason why a lot of these marriages fall through, because it's state marriage licenses. It's polygamy. You're married to more than just your wife. You're married to the state as well with your state marriage license so that you can get tax credits. You know, that's another issue. Um, my wife and I don't have a state marriage license. We have a marriage coverture which is in Black's Law Dictionary, by the way. So all you idiots, all you little devils out there that try to say that we are not really you know, lawfully married, we had witnesses. We had, I think it was uh, four witnesses. My dad, her dad, and two other men witnessed it, signed it, the marriage coverture. Legal document. Okay? So you can just run along and just you know, go back to your little whatever you do, you losers out there try to say I'm not lawfully married or something like that, whatever, okay? I can show you in Black's Law Dictionary that we are lawfully married. So uh, you're just, see, the, the people that attack me, a lot of times they're in sin. They've gone to the state. They have a little state marriage license. It's been a nice tax write-off for them over the years. So they could get convicted by somebody that's actually done it the biblical way. You know, I actually have spiritual covering over my wife, and that's what I uh, that's the way we did things. So I don't have a, a right to go out and divorce my wife, by the way. That's another thing that's interesting. Um, I can't just go divorce my wife. We can't technically get a divorce because it's a matter of spiritual covering. Hmm. But when you have a state marriage license, well, you just go back to the state again and you say, yeah, it's not working out. Um, can I get a writing of divorcement, a bill of divorcement here? Oh, sure. Sign these papers, sir, and uh, whatever else. And do you conform to mutually hate each other? Yes, we do. <laughs> or consent to mutually hate each other? Yes, we do. Okay, then here's your divorce, writing a divorcement. I go into a court and I say, I want to get divorced. They'll say, okay, a marriage license, please. I don't have one. Here's my marriage coverture. Oh, well, how's this going to work? You're her spiritual covering. You can't get divorced. This is going to be really messy. We're going to have to get attorneys and all kinds of bad things and um, God has high standards. God has very high standards. And I'm getting really sick and tired of people trying to tear them down. And there's other channels on YouTube and whatever else with a bunch of losers that can't stay married. And oh, they're going to have ministries and everything else too. And they're going to proclaim the word of God boldly and, and all this. They're losers. Okay? So, um, some guy that's not married and it uh, hasn't been married for a while and whatever else, uh, and it's been, I shouldn't say not married, I should say divorced, excuse me to clarify there. Um, if some guy's divorced, I, I'd be real careful listening to the guy, quite frankly, um, including Peter Ruckman, as much as, as highly as I think of him. And, you know, Eric John Phelps, great researcher in terms of the Jesuits, but uh, any kind of spiritual advice from the guy? I mean, when you can, when you can say vulgar things and say the Lord told me this, um, there's major problems there. There's major, major problems. Um, and Peter Ruckman, uh, love the man and the Lord, but uh, he was messed up in a bunch of different areas. So, you know, the old saying, eat the meat and spit out the bones is certainly applies there. Um, be very careful, okay? Uh, <laughs> so you can take it or leave it. I don't really care. 
what people think. But um, I do pray that you would at least consider that the scriptures say the husband of one wife. And if a man can't take care of his own house, how can he take care of the church of God? Okay, so that is going to be it. Thank you very much for watching.